Hello Houston, coming to you live today from my home office. Um, so today is a very kind of, can be a very touchy topic, um, but I think it's something that is very important for us to talk about during this time. Um, obviously when our nation is in crisis or even our world is in crisis, sometimes um, there is just the potential that uh, suicide rates would go up and then also uh, we've also noticed that suicide prevention hotlines have received a lot more phone calls as of recently. And so today what I would like to provide for you all today is just some information to help us put some ease to uh, these conversations and to be able to uh, help um, you maybe uh, help somebody else as well. So the first thing that I would like to talk about is really just providing ourselves with our own personal mental health and making sure that we are taking care of ourselves. Number one thing, it's gonna be very hard to help somebody else if we aren't already taking care of ourselves. So some things that I would like to recommend that we do on a daily basis is one, make sure that we're limiting our media um, intake. So. Uh, step away from the news every once in a while so that you are able to have a clear head and also so that you can recognize the things that you still have in your life that you do have control over. Um, in one of my previous videos we talked a lot about the circle of control and recognizing the things that we have within ourselves that we are able to um, really take control of and it allows us to remember that we have a place and a purpose. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is to stay active. That means let's get outside. Let's make sure that we put together a routine that we're gonna have throughout the day. Um, and let's um, not just sit idly waiting for this thing to pass over. Obviously, we need to take some action. We need to do something. So um, stay active. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is to stay connected. Uh, just because we are in this uh, in the midst of social distancing uh, does not mean that we have to be um, um, not social and so the great thing is that we are in this connected um, environment with the internet okay, I like I can't even imagine if this were to happen um, back in the 1990s even and so it's really great that we do have the resources to be able to stay connected to people even calling somebody and I even need to point this out I have a friend who connected with me through a thank you note this week and that just meant the world to me so connecting through old old school ways as well is just such a important thing to do at this time so that we remember that we aren't alone here okay the last thing is use your coping skills. You know, if you know that you need exercise to have a good mental state, go outside for a little bit, go for a walk, maybe even move the car out of the garage so that you can get some uh, exercise in. Maybe it's a yoga session. You know, we just need to get creative. We may even need our own space sometimes. I know right now we're feeling overly crowded in our houses too. So maybe just setting some time aside, letting everybody know, hey, I need about an hour. Can you give me an hour? And have that time for yourself to just recuperate. So that's what we can do for ourselves. And I also wanted to mention that in the state of Texas, there's already a hotline put together uh, around COVID-19 for mental health support. That number is 833-986-1919. So if you are finding that it's a struggle just to utilize some of these coping skills, maybe, or, or to even keep up your own mental health, maybe it's time to reach out for some help and find a resource around you that can be helpful. Now, let's talk a little bit more about a more serious um, issue, which is suicide. Um, and how do we find, see the signs of what's, of suicide? First of all, let's not shy away from the topic. That's the number one thing, is that if somebody's talking about it, we need to be active in asking questions, okay? Ask, do you have a plan? Ask, how can I help you? Ask, whatever it is, 
to make sure that that person continues to talk and allow them the space to talk. The other thing that we can do is just listen. Most of the time, people just don't feel heard during these times. So we're asking questions, we're making sure that we're listening, and the third thing that we can do is just be empathetic with no judgment whatsoever. Don't make it about yourself, it's still about the other person. The fourth thing that I would say we could do is make sure that the person just stays safe. Make sure that they're in a place that maybe they are watched over um, and really just be there for them. The other thing that we can help them to do is to connect with somebody else, whether that be a mental health professional or somebody that they are trust that they trust. And obviously, if they're reaching out to you, they trust you. And so what you should encourage them to do is reach out to somebody that does have uh, mental health training as well, whether it's a counselor, a nurse practitioner, a, a doctor even. Another resource that is out there is called the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. So I'm going to give you that number right now as well. This is a 24-7 emotional support system. The number is 1-800-273-8255. And I am also going to be putting all these numbers and information um, in more details uh, in the details below. So please check those things out. The last thing that I would hope that you would do is just to make sure that you follow up with the individual, that you make sure that they go and they seek that help that they said they were going to seek, and that they are still safe. One thing that I as a clinician work hard to do for my clients if they are feeling suicidal or having suicidal thoughts is clearly asking the question, do you have a plan to commit suicide? And if that is the case, then they need to seek professional help. So uh, let's go through these steps one more time. One, ask. Make sure you just ask the question. I know it can be uncomfortable, but it's super important. Two, keep them safe. Three, be there. Make sure you're listening. Listen to what they have to say. Be empathetic at that point. Nothing else is going to be helpful in, except to listen at, for them. And then help them to and for, help them to connect. And finally, and, and who I mean to connect to is a mental health professional. And then finally, follow up. Make sure that they found the help that they needed. The last thing that I would like to do is just let you know of that resource one more time. So the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is one 800 Two seven three eight two five five. I want to thank my friend Ernesto for giving me the idea to have this video today. This is truly a topic that we need to be aware of, and um, I just hope that if you, you, or if you know somebody else that is struggling with this, will seek the resources that you need in order to get through this time. I wish that you have positive mental health, and uh, I hope during these times that you just take care and stay safe. I hope you're well and take care. Bye.